Okay, so I just wanted to dispel some of the myths and some of the disinformation that's out there about cryosurgery. Um, my name is Ron McCulloch, I'm a consultant podiatric surgeon specializing in the condition of mortal stroma and our center has many different treatments including a number of minimally invasive ones like cryosurgery and ablative radiofrequency. So the first myth that I want to uh, mention is the idea with cryosurgery that it is not appropriate to do it if a patient has poor circulation. This is actually uh, quite incorrect. Obviously, if a patient has terrible circulation, then you're going to be careful about doing anything invasive. But cryosurgery is actually less traumatic on the blood vessels in the foot than other treatments such as open surgery or even radiofrequency. And the reason for that is because cryosurgery is extremely targeted. It only really affects the nerve in question and some of the round, surrounding fatty tissue and we really don't see any circulation issues. What you've also got to just bear in mind is that when we do our nerve block, it actually involves numbing a nerve that controls the size of blood vessels, which then dilate as a consequence. Dilated vas blood vessels means more perfusion into the foot, so it's even less of an issue. So uh, cryosurgery, bad circulation, it's actually what we normally pick if the patient's circulation isn't great. And so, for example, we'll often do it on patients with rain outs or if we want to avoid other treatments like open surgery. So the other myth that I sometimes come across is the idea that um, if you have cryosurgery, it kind of affects your other options. It doesn't. This is not true. Occasionally I have read and seen practitioners saying, oh, don't have cryosurgery because if you have it, then other treatments may not be as successful. Obviously, if conservative care has been exhausted, then cryosurgery is a good option and it doesn't affect, for example, the outcome in the way that steroid does. Steroid causes some wastage and some damage to the tissues, which you don't get with cryosurgery. So you could argue that cryosurgery is less damaging even than a steroid injection. Certainly when I have had to go into uh, an operation where I've had to open a patient up and perform a full open procedure, if that patient has had cryosurgery, it is impossible to even see any evidence of it, other than perhaps some reduction in the size of the nerve, but no negative effects on the tissues. So the idea that it somehow compromises your ability to have other procedures is completely incorrect. And the third myth that sometimes is uh, spouted and cited is that it's a temporary fix. Uh, this is not true at all. I've been doing cryosurgery now for 10 years and um, the recurrence rate is actually very low and there's not many patients who come back once they've had a successful procedure for a repeat. It occasionally happens, there is no pattern, it's not like everybody comes back after two or three years, not at all. Occasionally somebody will come back after six months or a year or five years, but to be honest I struggle to think of many cases that recur if the patient has been pain free for a year. So this, this is simply isn't true.